Hello, I'm Elizabeth Hook and I am your child's teacher this year. I'm taking the year one, two class and I thought it was important to include a video in this presentation as I know there are some parents I haven't had the chance to meet in person yet. I am hoping that changes now that the COVID restrictions have been lifted and you are all welcome back onto the campus. Uh, I thought before we get into the presentation, I should give you a little bit of a background, a uh, little bit of my background, I should say. I studied my undergrad degree in psychology, predominantly uh, focusing on statistics, and then I moved into working as a transport analyst at a consultancy for a number of years. Uh, then I changed to working in the business team within a school in admissions and community relations. And it was through my experience there that I saw the amazing things that happened in classrooms and I got to meet lots of different teachers and I developed relationships with students and I thought, oh, I need to be part of that. So I started my Masters of Teaching, specialising in early childhood. I graduated at the end of 2020. Yes, 2020. Uh, last year was my first year of teaching. I taught year two at an independent school in Brisbane. So although it was my first year of teaching, it was my sixth year of working in independent schools. So I made the decision to do something different. And I thought, I'm going to give the state school system a go. Sorry, that is my puppy making a noise, Elsie. She's just chasing a bug. Um, uh, I decided to come to the state school system and I thought it would be great to come on an adventure to somewhere a little bit smaller than Brisbane and Capella caught my eye and here I am. And I have to say, I feel in incredibly lucky to have your children in my class. My class is incredible and I'm very excited about the things that we're going to achieve this year. I'm really looking forward to working with you in partnership to support each of your children um, to achieve their learning goals for 2022. If at any time you have a concern or you have a question, please send me an email, uh, make a time to meet or we might be able to sort out via email. Um, I'm always happy to chat and always happy to listen and hopefully we can overcome any bumps in the road together. So let's get into the presentation. Okay, so first we're looking at the big picture. Uh, year one and two are part of the junior band or the junior grouping within Capella State School. Then you have year three to six who are part of the senior band. Within the junior band, uh, school reports are based on a five point scale using very high achievement, high achievement, sound achievement, low achievement, and very low achievement. Um, please be assured, I will be in touch if there's any concerns about your child not achieving at least a sound um, level on their report. Uh, and if you have any concerns at any time, please be in touch with me. These are the key learning areas that we will be covering this year and these are guided by the Australian curriculum. So it's consistent across schools, whether you're a state, independent or Catholic school. Uh, I will be teaching English and maths. I'll also be taking science for the year two students. The year one students will be going to science with Mrs. Fours who takes the prep one class. So the way we're running science this year is that we're doing it as a whole cohort subject. Um, Mrs. Espy, Crispy, Christy Espy, will be taking HASS Technologies, Design and Digital and ICT. Students are also going to have the chance to be exposed to STEM, Health and PE, which I'll be taking. Um, we do responsible relationships within um, health this term, and we're looking at whole school support for PE. They'll also be exposed to the arts, visual, media, dance, music and drama. We're starting off with media arts this term. Looking more specifically at English, I'm hoping maybe in conversations at home, you may already be aware that we're looking at poetry. We've looked at that since the beginning of term and we are actually coming towards the end of that unit. Then we're going to be starting on imaginative narratives, so looking at stories of family and friends. That unit's going to continue into term two. Once we finish that unit, we're going to be looking at my personal favourite, persuasive text. Um, we're going to be doing that through the lens of exploring characters. In term three, we're going to be looking at procedural text and then we're going to start on information text, which will be carried over to term four. And then we're going to finish off the year by looking at narrative again, this time through the lens of exploring plot and characterisation. Now, maths. 
always a busy one. I love maths as a subject and there are lots of topics that we need to cover. I'm not going to read through all of these for you. You can pause this presentation and have a look. If you have any questions or concerns at any point um, about maths, please reach out. I'm more than happy to talk about it with you. Science in year two this is. Um, we have been looking at mix, make and use so far this term, which is the chemical sciences. Next term we'll be looking at the toy factory unit, which is physical sciences. In term three we'll be looking at um, biological sciences and life cycles. Um, in term four we'll be looking at the earth and space sciences through the lens of save our planet earth. I've included a copy of our class timetable. Now timetables are funny things in primary schools. This gives you a pretty good guide of what we will be doing most days. That being said, uh, we are flexible, adaptable, agile thinkers and learners within my classroom. So sometimes we may have to make changes as events come up or concepts need a little bit more time or we need to revisit things. Um, so this is definitely a guide, um, a pretty good guide, but there might be changes along the way um, as the needs you know, arise. Homework. I have had a few questions from parents about homework. Um, I'm hoping that this will clarify those questions. I have spoken to those parents, but hopefully this will clarify for anyone else that might have questions. The number one focus for homework for year one and two students is reading. Your students will receive two readers in their homework folder and they also borrow a library book. If they could focus on reading those books, reading out loud to you, that would be wonderful. Ideally, they will also practice their spelling words and their high frequency words. High frequency words, please start from the beginning of the book. Once your child is able to say each word, recognize it within three seconds, then move on to the next page. We'll also be testing these at school and I will be in touch as I will be looking for some parent support uh, to help with that early in the morning. So watch out for an email if that is something that interests you, that should be coming out shortly. Looking at the spelling words, I am refining the process a little bit as we go along. So far, I have provided two different spelling word lists, depending on what group your student is in for our Letters and Sounds program. So their understanding of um, phonics and different sounds. Uh, we base the words, uh, the spelling words off those while consulting the C2C spelling list to make sure we're covering both areas. Within that, I'm now going to provide more differentiation. So I am going to provide a support list of words. And I did this last week and it was really successful for a number of students who had gone from only achieving maybe one correct word to getting out of 10 to then getting five out of five. And this is something that might change from week to week, depending on how they're achieving uh, with their previous spelling um, test on the Friday. So I've included a sample of the homework sheet. Uh, there is a column that I have made orange. That will be the support list. So they will those first five words, if I tick the S, that means your child is doing the five words in the first column. If nothing is ticked for your child, that means they'll be doing both columns of words. So they'll have 10 words to do. I'm also going to include two extension words so that for those students who are doing um, exceptionally well with their spelling or that's an area that they find comes more naturally for them, I'm going to include two more challenging words just to expand their vocabulary further. So if I would like your child to um, learn the extension words, I will tick the letter E on their homework sheet. I've also added a blank box where I can add this, your child's spelling result from the week before. In terms of practicing their spelling words. Probably the most simple approach is the read, cover, write, check approach. So we have been sticking in our homework sheet um, into the book with a blank line page beside it each time. That blank line page is a space for your child to practice their spelling words. So if you were going to use the read, cover, write, check approach, your student will just write, your child will just write uh, the spelling words down in one column. They will read the first word, cover it, write a copy of the word beside it on the same line, and then check that they've spelled it correctly. And they can do that once every night, once for each word each night. So they might end up with uh, four columns of words by the end of the week or five, depending how often um, they get a chance to do it. 
If, however, your student finds that approach a little bit boring, they find it they're not engaged or you're struggling to get them to do that, I've also included a sheet at the front of the homework book called Ways to Practice Your Spelling Words. And there are lots of different ideas there. Some are more challenging than others. So please encourage your student to find, your child, sorry, um, to find an approach that really suits them. I have seen quite a few colourful words coming home, which is wonderful to see. This is to make spelling practice a little bit more exciting, a little bit different. There is no requirement for you to implement any of those approaches. I am more than happy, sorry, I've just jumped off the slide. I'm more than happy for you to just stick with the simple um, read, cover, write, check approach if that's what works best for you. Um, please at any point, if you're having trouble with homework or your child is refusing to do homework, reach out to me. I would love to talk with you. I'm happy to talk to your child as well and see if there's a reason that they're finding it, whether it's too hard or they're too tired. Um, I know that students have really busy lives these days, so that's why I say that reading is the focus. Um, we practice the spelling words in class during letters and sounds time, so they will have an opportunity to be learning those words Obviously, if you can include that at home, that's amazing and we are really appreciative of it. Um, but I understand that sometimes life does get in the way. Which brings me to my final slide, the question slide. Um, if you have any questions about your child's progress, about what we're learning, um, about if anything really at all to do with your child within the school context, please reach out via email. Um, we can organise a time to chat or you can include your emails uh, your questions within the email or you can pop by um, before school I'm often racing around organizing things but after school if I don't have a meeting I'm always happy to have a chat so please stick your head in see if I'm there um, and just know that I'm a very open book and very happy to chat to you about anything um, any questions or concerns you might have I look forward to working with you all this year I think it's going to be a really great year um, enjoy the rest of the presentation. I know there's some slides from uh, Christy Mins, our principal, and Kate Legg, our um, deputy principal. Uh, you may, if you have a student in a different class, you may have seen these slides already, in which case you can tune out now. Um, but if you haven't, I would really encourage you to continue listening. Thanks very much. Welcome to Capella State School. We are a positive behaviour for learning school. So what is PBL? It's short for Positive Behaviour for Learning. So our school plans to be a positive place to learn. We like to teach students how to behave at school. We tell students when they do the right thing. We help students when they make mistakes and we work together with parents. So at the foundation of our PBL is relationships. So those are positive relationships with our teachers and our students and all staff members across the school. We have a range of tools that we use to teach our positive behaviour for learning. So one of them is teaching the expectations. Our school-wide expectations are be safe, be responsible, be respectful, be a learner. They're communicated in all of our classrooms and our outdoor spaces. Really important for our kids to know those as well as our classroom rules. In each classroom, we do do the zones of regulation. And that's a daily check-in with our teachers and students to see where the children are at ready for learning or whether they need a bit more intensive support to get their day turned around. One of the other things we talk about constantly at Capella State School is the effort metre. So we talk about gold, silver and bronze effort. So for gold effort, we like to talk to the kids about exceptional effort. They couldn't possibly do anything more to improve. Great effort or that silver effort is they can do one or two more things to improve and they can make it a little bit better. For those children with that bronze level effort, they didn't uh, put much effort in. Um, there's definitely more things that they could do to improve. So it's important we really do set those foundations for kids so they know the expectations for book work, they know the expectations for effort. And we drill into them. The more effort they put in, the better outcomes in their learning. Our next slide is about our Capella State School YouTube channel. So we've currently got 49 subscribers, as you can see there, and we'd love a whole pile more. Uh, this is a Capella State School channel where we communicate and put up lots of our positive behavioural learning 
our videos that we do, as well as our positive behaviour for learning events that we run throughout the year. Lots of fun to be had. And please like us and subscribe um, to our YouTube channel. Every class, every space, every staff member, every day will give out dojo points. So it's a way that we recognise and acknowledge the positive behaviour and work ethics of the children here in Capella. So every staff member will be able to give those dojos out through the year. So please have a look and check in with your classroom teacher to see how your child is going with their dojos. They can then trade them in and there's lots of different menu awards across each of our classrooms. Q Parents is a great place to go to to share a range of information with the school and for you to access information as well. Please register. I know it's been a bit tricky this year. There's been a, flu a few glitches with it, but please persevere and get yourself registered. You'll need your child's EQ ID as well as the unique registration link via email. So we're going to send them out again manually to all the families and hopefully you have success in getting registered. Don't forget we also have our homework centre for busy families. We're operating at three afternoons this term and hopefully we'll do the same next term. It is always very popular, so please get in and register early. Continuity of learning at Capella State School. If you find yourself stuck at home in isolation, there are a pile of resources that are available to you at home. And the first place to go is to the Learning at Home website. You'll see lots of links to that on our Continuity of Learning Guide. Um, it's on our school website. It is, if you just Google Learning at Home, you'll find a wealth of information on there. So please get involved, get on, find what you need, and I'm sure there's enough there to keep you busy for the time that you're away. But any questions at all, any concerns around that, always please give us a buzz. Don't forget, there is some really easy ways to access those Learning at Home materials, and it's called Fun Learning at Home TV. It's all on YouTube, and if you Google Learning at Home, uh, Coding at Home, or Reading at Home TV, you will definitely find some wonderful teachers teaching with some great outstanding lessons there. So if you get stuck and need a few other ideas, please use the Learning at Home TV. Thanks everyone for joining us for our Parent Information Night. Hope this has been a new and exciting way to deliver our messages. Uh, please give us some feedback, love to hear from you. Thank you. Hello families, my name is Kate Legg and I'm the Head of Curriculum here at Capella State School. Welcome. Capella State School uses the Australian curriculum as the basis for our teaching and learning programs. It sets out through content descriptions and achievement standards what students should be taught and achieve as they progress through school. The Australian curriculum provides us and our community with a clear understanding of what students should learn, regardless of where they live or what school system they are in. We are committed to empower our students to become lifelong learners through a student-centred approach. This year, our delivery of physical education and the arts has changed to a banded approach rather than a year-level approach. This allows us to align our teaching and learnings to our local context. For instance, in Term 1 for physical education, our students are learning team sports with a fair play focus and this aligns very well with establishing relationships earlier on in the year and getting to know other students in different year levels. In Term 2, we will be doing an athletic skills rotation to upskill our students in readiness for our whole school athletics day. Term 3 will be about ball, score, ball sports such as rugby, soccer, netball, basketball, tennis and t-ball. We will outsource some of these areas so that we have professional coaches to provide skill-based lessons. In Term 4, of course, we will focus again on the important skill of swimming and water survival skills. We are also offering a curriculum focus program on Wednesday afternoons from 2 to 3 p.m. The rationale behind this program is to give students 
and teachers an opportunity to complete a task using Australian Curriculum's three core foundations, eight key learning areas, our three cross-curricular priorities and seven, and seven general capabilities. It's a chance to participate in a shared goal, mix with other year levels and promote positive well-being at school. It is a fun afternoon and we all enjoy the different tasks on offer. Thank you very much for listening.